Thank you for staying with us. Now, four operatives of the Department of State Security and the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps have been arrested by the police for kidnapping. They were said to have whisked away a bureau de change businessman to a bush along Elisha Road, where they demanded ransom. A few have made reports. It's the arrest of suspected criminals who have been disturbing the peace of the state in the last few months. 18 of them are being paraded before journalists at the State Police Command in Oshobo. Their offenses range from kidnapping, conspiracy, armed robbery, murder, cultism, and unlawful possession of firearms. Of interest is the case of this suspect, Ajibola Ogunibi, who allegedly connived with some DSAs and NSCDC operatives to kidnap a bureau de change operator and demanded for ransom. He was, however, given 15,000 naira by the operatives after the ransom was paid. Upon a report by the complainant, who happens to be one of the bureau de change businessmen residing somewhere in Sabo, Oshobo, that some men came to his office with gun and whisked him away to the bush along Elisha Road. And at the end of the day, demanded for ransom thereby size and dispossess him of the sum of 204,000 naira found on him. He was consequently left to his fate in the bush while they escaped. The tactical team from the CP surveillance court activated their investigation mechanism, which led to the arrest of one of the perpetrators in his hideout at Elisha Garage area, Shobo. The Suspect confessed to the crime and effort is ongoing to arrest his other cohorts, who include some members of the sister agencies now undergoing interrogation. The police also paraded seven cultists led by Tajuddin Olaleka with three pistols, live cartridges, among other dangerous weapons. All the suspects confessed to the crime. These two suspects also shot dead a motorcyclist along Fountain University Road in Oshobo and sold his motorcycle for 80,000 naira. The police also paraded the traffic warden, Aruna Yusuf, who specializes in selling ammunition to criminals. All the suspects are to be charged to court on completion of police investigations. Peace, I also pray, will continue to be witnessed throughout this new year and beyond. Cooperation of members of the public is required as usual, to maintain these successes. The police also used the opportunity to tell the public that the ban on carnivals in the state is still in force. Rafiul Hamid, TVC News, Oshubu. Well, joining me now for insights on, uh, into the story is a former director of the Department of State Services, Dennis Amakri. Good morning. Good, morning, Good to see you. Brother. Now, when you look at the story, I wonder what comes to mind. What impressions are you getting with regards to the story? I think there are two basic things that are wrong with this story. First of all, number one, there was no serious, diligent investigation. You right. know, and I don't know why, uh, when things like this happen, uh, the police will run to the press, and then, of course, I don't know. Maybe they are trying to impress the people that. We are doing something because investigate first, yeah. then come out with your facts, and then take the person to court mm. within 24 hours. But you see, in this kind of situation, uh, there was even another um, version of it that they are alleged to be an SCDC or DSS people, so we don't know who they are anymore. Mm. You know, that is not uh, hard to find out if there is a very good uh, relationship with the sister agencies, as you said. Mm -hmm. you know. And what is the second thing you said? There are two No, the sides. second thing is that I can see a breakdown of communication between the heads of these agencies in Ocean State. Mm -hmm. Because either the commissioner of police and the director of SSS or the commander of the NSCDC are not talking to each other. Mm -hmm. Because if they are, this is something that they would have first tabled in front of them. Before coming to the press? Before coming out to tell us that, oh, we are now investigating or, you know, it would have made a, an easy 
recognition of whether those people are actually from those services. So are there implications now with the steps that uh, the police are taking with regards to the inf uh, investigation that is yet to be done? Uh, what is going to happen is that by the end of the investigation, um, we'll find out that maybe they are not uh, DSS or they are not NCA, NCDC, NCDC. Then um, uh, I expect him to apologize, the commissioner of police, or if they are, mm. then I expect him to hand them over to the appropriate services because he knows that you don't prosecute people who are in service. Right. They will go through an internal disciplinary procedure, dismissed, then take it to court. Hmm. That's the procedure. But you don't just pick up somebody from the street who claim to be a soldier or something and then, of course, take him to court. Because it's already generating some concern exactly. that if these two people are <laughs> security operatives yes. for which a lot of persons rely on for their safety, exactly. so what are we saying? That's why I think it was very careless because he was not thinking of the uh, bigger society, mm. you know, because people will be worried. Mm. Okay, suppose they were on there for real investigation. People will start to doubt now. How am I sure you are not fake? Mm -hmm. How am I sure that you are not, you know, this or that, you know? So I think the best thing to do in all cases is to have back up yourself with very good investigation, facts, before you come to the press. Now, you, you mentioned something earlier that has to do with relationship oh, yes. between security uh, organizations and all of it. How critical is that, especially in cases like this? It is very, very critical. Um, it is common where you see people uh, impersonating. Impersonating. Mm. In fact, I had a situation where I was in my friend's office in VI and we were talking and some people came in there and said that they were from the DSS. Right. And then they wanted to arrest him because he didn't pay custom duty or something like that. And uh, I first of all said, okay, can you identify yourselves? They don't even know me. Because if you don't know me and you are in the service, then you must have joined yesterday. Mm. You know? So they brought their ID card. Fake ID cards. I have to call the director in Lagos State to come and arrest them. You know? So it, it, is, it is very, very worrisome that we are having these fake people, maybe because of the economic situation, but um, uh, you have all kinds of fake people, military, DSS, even fake police, mm. you know, mounting roadblocks and doing all kinds of things. Is there a way to check these activities of these people? I think uh, the services have to put their heads back together. And then, of course, have a very good identification system. Right. You know, let not the police ID or the DSS ID be faked. They should have chips in them, you know, so that they are known to be, you know, standard security cards or badges instead of uh, the ones you print and laminate. And then, of course, those ones can easily be faked. Mm. Just yeah. the identity cards uh, should be standard, standardized. Yes. yes, and then, of course, when you go to arrest people in their houses, sometimes, you know, um, I know that the DSS sometimes can arrest without warrant, you know, mm. statutorily. Oh, right. But they should try and standardize that system where you have to carry a warrant to show. And the warrant is got from the court. You know, we are going to arrest this person for this and that and that and that. And then, of course, the judge or the magistrate will say, okay, I agree with you and they give a warrant. Mm. So when you go, you present the warrant and attend, uh, ask the person to come and then uh, submit to arrest. Mm. You know, but when some of these things are not in gray areas, there, are, there is a tendency for people to take advantage of the situation. Now, if at the end of the day the investigation is done and they find out that these persons belong to these agencies yes. that they mentioned, yes. what kind of signal do you think it would send to the public? It will send a lot of signals. Mostly it will tell the public that um, there are bad eggs in 
of course we are Nigerians you see mm -hmm. the, the bad eggs are everywhere but it will show that for even an agency like the DSS that are trying to maintain their integrity you know bad eggs are infiltrating mm -hmm. and if bad eggs are infiltrating into that kind of organization I think the best thing for them to do is to sit back and look back at their recruitment process all right we have to leave the conversation here now uh direct former director of uh, the department of state services uh dennis amakri we must thank you for your time thank you program. for having me